introducing to you, Mason the Dragon Charles! Oh, 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 Again, the first over! Unbelievable! Sinking in deeper, it's over! Let's talk about your Cage Warriors journey, because you have fallen into this very elite category where you're a two-weight champion, which has only been done by Dan Hardy and Conor McGregor. That's some pretty interesting and nice. serious company. <laughs> nice names to be tied to, innit? Yeah. Yeah, that was an accident more than anything. With the lockdown in place and stuff like that, I knew they were struggling to get fighters in and abroad. I won the lightweight title, and they were looking for someone for me to fight, and there was no one that really stand out as a next contender. There was nothing that I thought would be a good fight to get any signed, because it's not about just winning at that point. It was, I need to do enough to get noticed, and right. I need to highlight myself so that I can jet off in the UFC and really start my career. Oh, Jones! I still refer to Cage Warriors as my learning area. That was where, that was my school days, where I could learn before you go on to full time and you work in the UFC. So my manager, uh, Graham Poylan, was looking for a good matchup, and Reese McGee was meant to be fighting Adam Proctor for the welterweight title. And then when he got signed, short notice, um, I was speaking to him a lot, because I, I knew as soon as he was signed, I could tell. So I messaged him and I was like, you've been signed, and he just ignored me completely. I was like, oh yeah, he's, he's been signed. And then um, as soon as the news came out, we spoke. And I realized that, there was no one to fight Adam Proctor. Uh, there was no one for me to fight. And I liked that fight against Adam Proctor. I loved that, that matchup. So I messaged Graham and said, I want to fight Adam Proctor for the Weltweight title. And he sort of laughed and sent me loads of faces back. And I was like, no, <laughs> I was like, I want to fight Adam Proctor for the Weltweight title. It's a big point for people that haven't seen. Yeah, six foot three. Great gym. Yeah, great gym. So Alex Henn and his head coach. More than beatable, though. I seen it and there was nothing he did that was dangerous for me. I, I knew I was better than him in every area. I knew I could beat him in any part of the fight. So you've got to be confident in this game. People can say what they want. They can say I'm weak. They can say I'm strong. I'll keep putting people away. Before I go, if you didn't think I was a threat before, this the whole division should be on warning. I'm coming for everyone. So I took it. Um, a lot of people thought it was a stupid risk. Um, I literally had a conversation with someone who means a lot to me, um, who's high level M M MMA, who literally said, you're making a massive mistake. He's really? like, just wait. He was like, we can get you into the UFC, it's no problem. Do not take this fight. And I said, look, I said, I'm not worrying about someone just because they're big. I want to be fighting the boys in UFC who are in the lightweight division. I said, if I can beat Adam Proctor, it shows I'm going to peak with lightweights in the UFC. I said, that's all I see like Adam Proctor is a big lightweight. I said, that's where I'm going to look at it, and that's where I'm going to beat him. And it's over! Unbelievable! The lightweight champ is the welterweight champ! After the fight, I asked to fight the biggest beast the UFC could dig up. He said the monster. Did you not say monster? monster? And I like yeah. that line. Yeah, it's a so... call out to, to Dana White. Yeah. I remember saying that uh, I'd ask Graham and I'd ask Cage Vault Warriors to find me the biggest beast or monster they could find. And they, they hadn't done it. I wasn't half happy. So I shouted out to Tane White and Sean Shelby and challenged them to find the biggest beast, the biggest monster they could dig out for me. And I'll put my way in too. So I've set myself up. I've got, a, um, I've got a tough opponent coming up. And when that comes out, I'll just do what I do best and destroy whoever's in front of me and start making my climb. It sounds like you might have been in a little bit of a hurry. Did, did you feel like this was the right time to attack the UFC? This, this is the thing, like, you've got to have that mindset to be the best in the world, and I am going to be the best in the world. One day I will be at the top of the tree and I will be the best in the world. It's just a matter of time for me. 